This is a joint work with uh, Nils Frambrose Möller and uh, Nils Tarp. And the uh, overriding question was, how does aid work in the macroeconomy? There are many different conclusions based on the use of essentially the same publicly available uh, databases. And if you use the same uh, uh, data and you get different conclusions, then I think there is just one possibility that the differences have to be due to the choice of econometric uh, uh, methods or models. And uh, we have, uh, in particular, looked at the effect of, say, different assumptions of uh, uh, exogeneity and endogeneity on the results. And uh, this kind, the endogeneity and the exogeneity has already been discussed a lot. I think it has a slightly different uh, role to play when you have uh, time series analysis, but the effect is exactly the same if you have if you assume exogeneity and you have endo endogeneity, then you can easily get to zero effect. Uh, uh, but if you can disentangle them, then you can see it actually that there is a positive effect of aid on growth, for example. Uh, we have also looked at data transformations in time series analysis. Again, data transformations can be very, very uh, risky. And most studies are based on per capita aid, per capita uh, in income, for example. And if uh, a population is actually, uh, say, changing in a non-homogeneous way over the sample period, and with this I mean now that the proportion of, say, uh, adults, old, and, uh, old people, and children changes significantly over this period, and for, for the data we are analyzing, the period is actually from 1960 to uh, 2010, no, 2007 in this uh, case. So it's a very long period, and you can expect that the composition of, of population has changed quite dramatically uh, over this period. If you then divide by uh, population, you will, have, you will get an additional effect on, on the, uh, um, say, par parameter explaining how aid influences growth, which has nothing to do with, with aid. It has just to do with the change of, of, of population. So you also have to be very careful there. Then, of course, we, we are uh, doing it in a system uh, approach, meaning that we have five, uh, uh, a system of five equations, which is different to the, the usual approach, which is a, a, a single equation approach. And the reason why we use the system approach is that it actually, uh, then you can address the endogeneity and the exogeneity questions. You can actually uh, uh, address mo most of the problems that possibly uh, um, harm the, the existing uh, 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 analysis reported in, in the literature. It is a very broad approach. So the purpose of the study is that then to offer an econometrically coherent and transparent picture of how aid has worked in sub-Saharan Africa, which is, of course, one of the poorest countries or areas of the world. And we would also like to assess previous results in the literature within our very broad uh, econometric framework. And also to address the uh, widespread misuse of statistical in insignificance as an argu argument for aid ineffectiveness. And Finn already mentioned this part, so, but it is equally relevant in the time series literature. The econometric approach is based on the so-called co-integrated VAR model, which is a fairly complex method, and I will, not, I will spare you from, from all details. You will not appreciate them anyway. <laughs> and it is a system approach. So we have five uh, uh, equations. In, in our system, and the specification is generally based on, on, on a broad statistical characterization of the data. And, and so we start with a very, very broad characteristic uh, uh, representation of the data, and then we are testing 
uh, uh, testing all kind of theoretically motivated hypothesis so that in the end we end up with a much more narrow model, but this model is completely consistent with the, the information in the data. We do not impose any restrictions which are, which in a sense violate the information in the data. And that means, by this kind of procedure, it means that this analysis will provide what I call broad confidence intervals within which the empirically relevant claims should fall. And then you can say, well, all models provide confidence bands, and they do, but they pr provide confidence bands within the context of that specific uh, model and the choices being made. Whereas this is such a broad approach, so when we got, get a confidence band, it is a confidence band for that empirical reality not just because the choice of, of, of model. So some of the summary results. So the, let's see now, the first part, we have tried to, to distinguish between these two. Uh, eight has a long run effect on the macroeconomy, that is the first uh, column, or eight does not uh, have a long run effect on the macroeconomy. And you can see, oops, that was, oops, here it is. And you can see that uh, if in, 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 in the first column we have actually uh, uh, 20 plus 7 of the countries indicating that aid actually has a long run effect. Then we also distinguish between whether uh, uh, say the macroeconomy has affected the, the, the aid. This is, let's say now, I have to point here. This is uh, now the two groups where we say it's not, the, the direction of causality is not just from aid to growth, but also from growth to, to aid. And the, the lower one says that uh, there, there is no uh, link from, from macroeconomy to aid. And it means that for the first group here, that is what we call uh, that we have endogeneity between the aid and the macroeconomic variables. And the second one here, that is where we would say we have actually exogeneity. Aid influences the macro growth and the macro <coughs> variables, but not the other way around. And, and uh, uh, I think in almost all the studies I have seen at least, this is more or less what is assumed. But there's only seven countries that actually satisfy this uh, assumption, whereas most of them are actually in, in this group. Then we have the, the next group where we say aid does not uh, have a long run effect on, on the macroeconomy. And there we have the first one, first group where we have seven countries where we would say A doesn't push the, uh, the macroeconomic variables or, the, uh, or, or GDP growth and so on, but actually the macroeconomy affects aid. That could have been more or less of what uh, Channing showed, no it was Sam, with, with uh, uh, um, aid and, and education. <laughs> For example, that was, was a typical example of this case. Whereas then we have two countries left that where we say aid and the macro variables are essentially unrelated. And this is a very, in a sense, a very puzzling uh, uh, outcome. And uh, because it is, because you would, uh, you would expect aid to have some effect. So we have been looking more closely in more detail on, on these countries uh, by including the effect of, of an open economy, like real exchange rate, and also including the effect of inflation, which has not been in this part, in, in this study. And then when we do that, the, the puzzling uh, results disappear, and what we find is that aid has, is actually effective. So in a sense, uh, most, uh, you can see already here, most countries fall into the group, which is uh, uh, saying that yes, aid works. 
uh, uh, and for the few countries where it doesn't seem to work, we can actually find out that it is, it is actually, we, we can reverse that outcome by including more uh, variables. Of course, I mean, this study is based on, on, uh, on, on the effect of aid on, on GDP growth, on, on investment, on uh, government consumption and private consumption. And of course, there are more variables. We all know that. And if you include more, then of course you will also get more uh, detailed results and more precise results. <clears throat> so the major conclusions is that aid has had a positive long-run effect on, on the key macro variables for the vast majority of countries. And only in three out of 36 countries did we find a negative effect of aid on GDP or investment, either or. And, and, um, because, and that, in a sense, and that negative effect actually also, it was one in one of the countries where, which uh, we have, uh, have uh, made a more detailed analysis on, and that effect disappeared in those countries. So essentially, I think the claim that aid can even be harmful, I think there is absolutely no evidence for that in, in, in this study. And uh, then uh, we also find uh, the, the, the results of, of our analysis study uh, show that the transmission of aid on the macroeconomy has been quite heterogeneous and we think that the country specific approach is therefore vital. Then there are also some econometric conclusions. We asked the question in the beginning, does the method, choice of method matters? And it seems to, to, to matter. And it seems also critical to distinguish between the effect of aid in the short run and in the, in the long run. And I think it is also extremely important to use a system approach in order to get a, a correct estimate of the effect of aid in time series analysis. And I, the f third thing is that it is absolutely essential to account for changes in political government, wars, conditionalities, major reforms, and extraordinary effects such as droughts and floods. If you don't do it, you will bias your, your results. <laughs>